Which racket is better, Agustin Tapias or Arturo Coelhos? Which is more powerful? What are their main differences? Hello all players, I'm Pablo and I welcome you to a new 4 set. Today I have the rackets of the number ones. The Nox AT10 Luxury Genius 18K Alum 2024 by Agustin Tapia and the Head Extreme Pro by Arturo Coelho. These are two of the best selling rackets of the season, but are they worth it? Well, let's start with the technical data of each of the rackets. The 8010 Tapia's racket is a tiltwheel racket that comes in a weight between 360 and 375 grams. In particular, my racket has a weight of 362 grams without the custom grip. So, what is the custom grip? It is the Nox technology to improve the grip and reduce vibrations. But in my case, I remove it to be able to change the grip more easily and reduce those extra 5 grams that the custom grip weights. On the other hand, this 8010 has a balance of 26.7 cm and a grip size of 12.5 cm. The 8010 has a price in paddle market of 325 euros, but if you want to support the channel, use the code for set and you get 292 euros with worldwide shipping. While at the same time, the Head Stream Pro by Arturo Coelho is a diamond format racket that comes in a weight between 360 and 380 grams. In particular, the Extreme Pro that I have weights 372 grams and has a balance of 27.7 cm and a grip size of 12 cm. Coelho's racket has a price in Paddle Market, the official store of Paquito Navarro of 252 euros, but with the code for set, you will find it at 225. So let's move on to the next question, what fibers does each racket use? The Extreme Pro repeats one more year with the mix between carbon fiber and fiberglass. But the 8010 is embedded in many ways and this is one of the main ones. Because the 8010 of 2024 now uses aluminized 18K carbon fiber. So what the hell does aluminized fiber mean? Well, first of all, it is now in silver color. But the important thing is that aluminium is a very light metal that has among its qualities the ability to dissipate heat very well. So, in other words, the new AT10 is more resistant to temperature changes. In fact, aluminized carbon fiber is used in fireproof elements because of its resistance to heat. Therefore, the 2024 AT10 will be more stable at any time of the year compared to the 2023 model. So, in other words, in summer the racket will be less soft and in winter it will be less hot hard than normal. So let's move on to the question that what rubbers does each racket use? The Extreme Pro repeats one more year with the power foam a medium to hard rubber. But the AT10 also changed in this aspect. In its five previous versions, Tapia's racket has always used the same rubber, the HR3. But from this year we have something new because it begins to use the MLD Black EVA. And the main quality of this rubber is its double density. In the external layers it uses a higher density rubber and in the internal area a lower density rubber. Nox had decided to do so as well as Bull Paddle, but there are other brands such as Quigma or Starvite that place the rubber in reverse with the rubber of higher density on the inside and the lower rubber on the outside. So we have already seen two important changes in the 8010 of 2024 compared to the one of 2023. But how does the Extreme Pro differ from the old Delta Pro? Well, first of all, the mold is a bit different. It has small improvements with sharper edges to increase aerodynamics and a few minor changes to the core. But the most obvious change is the whole pattern. Head has chosen to incorporate larger holes in the sweet spot area. Because previously in the Delta Pro there were smaller holes in this area. So what does this do? Well, two things to increase the sweet spot and the bowl output. Head has also changed the rough, although it is still in relief. One more important change is about the weight, because this racket is 5 grams lighter than the Delta Pro, which is very good for people like me who are not so strong. And finally, the Extreme Pro incorporates the silicon cap, which is super comfortable for people like me who grip the racket at the lowest possible point. What else has changed in the 2024 AT10 compared to the 2023 AT10? Because we have already talked about the carbon and the dual density rubber. The other main innovation has to do with the air channels that Nox call EOS flap. 
These are two holes at the head of the racket which according to Knox increase the aerodynamics of the racket and its agility. We had already seen similar solutions in other brands and as I'm not a rocket scientist I can only say that they look really cool. Because the racket feels like a Formula 1 although I don't feel that it moves better or worse because of it. The 8010 doesn't come with a frame protector while the Extreme Pro comes with the Acti Sock that is my favorite protector. The Tapia Rocket family is completed with the 12 12K carbon version and the attack version in diamond format with 18K aluminizer as well. While Coelho's rocket family is completed with the extreme motion whose only difference is to weigh 10 grams less than the Pro. The Extreme Elite, which is the softer version, and the Extreme One, the version of a single hole that I already tested in the channel. As we have started collaborating with Paddle Market, I have to try to convince them to do a giveaway, so subscribe and leave a comment if you would prefer the 8010 or the Extreme Pro for you. But now it's time to get down to action. It's time to test Arturo's Coelho's Extreme Pro and Agustin Tapia's 8010. So which one is more powerful? But let's keep in mind that the difference between one racket and the other is 10 grams and 1 centimeters of balance. But first, let's test the racket in defense. And here you will quickly notice two important things. First, the agility of the 8010 allows me to feel more comfortable. You don't feel like you are late to any ball and you can change directions quickly. Secondly, the sweet spot of the 8010 is superior. Although sometimes I can hit the ball perfectly, but the 8010 penalizes me less than the Extreme Pro. Of course, the greater hardness of the Extreme Pro will give us more security when we hit the ball perfectly. Despite not being a very, very hard racket, the Extreme Pro is stiffer than the 8010. So therefore, we will need to make more effort to move the ball, but the response will be more consistent. Time to move on to the attack, time to talk about volleys. And for me, agility and maneuverability are even more important here. Because volleys are the stroke that you have less time to react and feeling a heavy racket can penalize you. Also, I'm not a person who is used to hitting with the top of the racket. For those who may have played tennis, it is easier for them to raise the point of contact. But I'm used to hitting with the center part of the racket, so having a center sweet spot like the 8010 works in my favor. If your case is the opposite, the high sweet spot of the Extreme Pro will be great for you. Anyways, in both rackets you feel that you can put your weight on the ball, although I do notice that the 8010 is more reactive than the Extreme Pro. It is as the 8010 has more life and the Extreme Pro is more serious. So if you can master that aspect, the 8010 is very explosive. But now let's move on to the overhead shots. And here it is clear that I like more the 8010 in Vivoras for two reasons, its agility and the roughness. The rough of the 8010 is sandy so it will end up disappearing but it is more effective than the relief rough of the Extreme Pro. Therefore in a stroke like the Vivora I feel that I can give more effect for those two reasons with the Tapia racket. However in a classic bandeja the Extreme Pro is able to transmit more speed to the ball. And here comes the big question, what happens in this mass? Well, I have good news. Both rackets are powerful, very powerful. And here it will depend on you. If you are strong enough and feel comfortable with a high balance, the Extreme Pro is better. But if you are not so strong and prefer an intermediate balance, the 8010 is better. So in my case, I prefer the 8010 for the weight reason. I will have to test the Extreme Motion, which is the lighter version and ideal for a player like me. But in short, the Extreme Pro is more powerful as long as you can accelerate the racket. It is in fact one of the most powerful rackets I have tested this season. The 8010 works best on spin shots where technique is more important than power. So what type of player is each racket for? If you are looking for agility, you like to attack with spin and feel more comfortable with the ball, the 8010. If you like to attack flatter with a heavy racket, you like high balance and you are looking for a medium hard racket, the Extreme Pro is your racket. What would you like the next review to be? Thank you very much for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Ciao!